Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Before we get into today's video, I wanted to take just a quick second to share with you my top three Maligator Mom must-haves. First on my list is Tactipup.com. Now these are the collars that you see my dogs wearing in all my videos, and I personally prefer the two inch width. You can get them with their name embroidered on them, and I always have them add a handle. These collars are made with a cobra buckle and all metal hardware. They are incredibly durable and they are made right here in the USA. So if you're interested, check out tactipup.com and use my code MALLIGATORMOM to save 10%. And number two, everybody wants to know, what do you feed your dogs? Well, this is it. I feed my dogs Munster Milling. Now this is a customizable kibble, so you can actually go onto their website and select additives that they will mix fresh into your bag. It's absolutely phenomenal. I add things like bacon fat, salmon oil, probiotic, and freeze-dried elk. If you're interested, use my code MALLIGATORMOM and you will save 55% off your first custom bag. And number three, if you are interested in online dog training videos, you definitely need to check out robertcabral.com. I have consumed a lot of online dog training videos and Robert is by far the best. Head over to robertcabral.com, use code MALLIGATORMOM. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's me, Maligator Mom. I am here with Crisis today, and I am going to do a video about introducing her to the rest of my pack. This was actually a suggestion from a viewer on last week's video, so thank you for that. I appreciate it very much. Um, great suggestion and great timing because this is actually something that I am working on with her right now with the rest of my pack. So I'm gonna break that down in today's video and show you how you can go about introducing a new puppy to the rest of your pack. So if you have a new puppy that you want to introduce to your family and you're wondering how do you go about introducing them to the other dogs in your pack, then um, you're gonna need a few things right off the bat. Number one, I want you to get a leash. Number two, I want you to get a crate. And number three, I want you to get an inclusion pin. And what I mean by an inclusion pin is like those big puppy play pins that you see. And you'll see it later in this video if you're not quite sure what that is. But let's go ahead and show you guys how I start to introduce Crisis to the rest of my pack. Now I do have to start this video with a little bit of a disclaimer because I actually heavily rely on the crate during this process and it takes place over many weeks. So if you're not quite sure how to crate train your puppy, then I will leave a link to my video Crate Training 101. You might find that very helpful and you're definitely going to need to be utilizing the crate as a part of this process. So here's how we begin. You're gonna to need to put your puppy inside of a crate. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to bring the other dogs out and put them inside their kennels. Now, here is everybody in their crates, including the puppy over there in the corner. And I have her faced towards the dogs and I am not going to put a blanket over and cover her. Now, the reason that I do this is simple. So I want the dogs to just exist in each other's space. This coexistence is really, really important because you're giving your dogs an opportunity without any stress to just exist in each other's space. They can see each other, hear each other, smell each other, but there's no pressure or stress to interact. And so this is actually something that I start with my puppy from the time they're eight weeks old. Now it's my opinion that introducing an eight week old puppy to a group of Malinois or even just one of my dogs at a time could potentially prove dangerous. That's just my dogs. I know my dogs. Um, I know that Riot is a bit of a jerk. He doesn't really deal with introductions to small dogs or puppies in a very positive way. So I have to move really slow with him. Now, this puppy is going to spend time doing this at least once a day. So at least one of her crate sessions every day will be spent out here coexisting with my bigger dog. So even if the puppy starts crying, um, it's okay, let the dog cry. But you do have to make sure that you check the energy of your larger dogs. You should have enough control over them that if they're getting rowdy or anxious or barking or jumping or, or being too overexcited and adding stress to the situation, you need to nip that in the butt right away. They are not allowed to act like that right now. You've got to maintain the peace here with your older dogs so that she can observe 
that they can be calm around her. You're just trying to get her to see and understand that these dogs are not trying to add to her stress right now, and you're just gonna coexist in this room for a little while. So once your puppy is old enough that you can expect that out of them, and that can happen around 10 weeks old or so, by about 10 weeks, your puppy really shouldn't be protesting much anymore when you put them in the crate. So by about 10 weeks old, I am going to be bringing her out here and she is going to be spending at least one session a day of being in the crate here, doing this. So this is actually the routine for the first couple weeks. Now, once the pups are able to just coexist like this naturally, which means there's not a lot of whining or protesting from the puppy, there's not any excitement from the other dogs, and you can come in and out of here and there is just peace in this coexistence, then you know that you have accomplished something and it's time to move on to the next step. Here it is. This is what you are looking for. This is a state of calm. This is a state of all four dogs being completely content to just coexist in each other's space. Nobody is protesting, nobody is barking, nobody is whining, nobody is jumping at the gate or clawing at their crate door. This is exactly the energy that you want to create. Now you want to get some consistency out of this. <laughs> Look at that little tongue. <laughs> and once you have accomplished that, we can move on to the next step. Let's see what that is. So step two is moving your puppy into an inclusion crate. And this is the period of time where I'm actually going to allow the other dogs to approach the puppy. But there is the barrier of this inclusion crate. So again, they can see each other, smell each other, uh, hear each other, but they are not going to be able to physically interact at this point. And this is just for the safety of the puppy. So, you know, she's very small. One misstep could literally end her life, unfortunately. So I think it's really important that when you're introducing these types of dogs to a small puppy, and I have a dog like Riot, who I know is not real keen on meeting puppies, that I take this process very slow. So I'm actually going to bring the dogs in, and this is going to be the first time I do that. So I'm gonna be transparent and show you guys what that looks like. Now I'm going to start with Riot, and I'm going to just introduce them one at a time. I would not advise introducing the whole pack in this way. Um, just bring them in one at a time and just for a couple minutes. We're talking, you know, a very brief introduction. That's all I'm looking for. So I'm actually just gonna keep the camera rolling and I'm gonna go grab Wyatt and bring him in and let's just see how it goes. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, Riot is in the building. He's being a little passive. Good boy. Good, good boy. Yeah, hi honey. Hi, I know, okay, get down. So he's a little aloof um, and that's okay. I'm not really gonna put a whole lot of pressure on him to come interact with the puppy. If he doesn't want to, I'm not gonna force him to. All right, so Riot was completely uninterested. Um, he did kind of just acknowledge the fact that the puppy was in the house, but he really didn't show her much attention. And I'm okay with that. I'm not going to call him over here and like force him up to um, interact with her face to face or anything like that. It's gonna be his own choice for now. So this is nice. She's just making an observation. She's actually less excited about her than I thought she would be. Um, I actually wouldn't have been surprised if she tried to jump the gate <laughs> and get in there with her. So I'm actually okay with this. She's getting a little too excited, so I'm gonna um, bring her energy down and just get her attention. So I'm just gonna ask her for some focus. So again, this is really nothing super fancy or even premeditated or thought out much. This is just um, me getting them to coexist comfortably together. Uh, you know, it's, it's really not rocket science. You just kind of have to treat each situation for what it is. So Storm was a little bit more excited than Riot was, so I wanted to calm that down a little bit. Oh, that's good. So she licked Storm's face um, through the little gate there. Storm was fine with that. And um, their body language is good. Storm's not showing me um, that she's really too bothered or worried about the puppy. So I'm happy with this. Now, again, if this was a typical 
um, session, I would have her out here for about an hour or so just with Storm, and I would expect a calm energy from Storm during that hour. Um, but, you know, again, for the sake of the video, I am going to put Storm up, and I'm going to go grab Fury and introduce her as well to see how she does. So I've got Fury and the puppy here, and they're doing just fine. I actually uh, didn't have the camera on recording like I thought I did when she first came in. I thought I hit record. I didn't. Um, anyway, but when she first came in, she just gave her a couple sniffs and um, pretty much ignored her, which again, I'm fine with that, and I'm not forcing any interaction. I'm just giving them some treats, asking them for some duration and obedience, nothing fancy, just something that helps them stay focused and understand that they can coexist in the same space together. Um, and I'm, I'm just trying to keep their energies in check. Because as we know, Belgian Malinois can uh, get a little rowdy. So it's very important that you have enough control or enough know-how to keep your dog's energy under control in situations like this where it's really important to maintain calm. So once you've done an introduction to all of the dogs individually, I'm kind of fast forwarding this process for the sake of the video, but you are gonna get to a point where all three of the dogs are going to be able to be out around your puppy in an inclusion pin inside of the home. And again, we're just upping the ante a little bit to what we saw previously in the crate by just including a little bit more freedom, a little bit more um, experience, sensory experience with the puppy, but still with the added um, safeguard of having a physical barrier. So um, what we're gonna do is actually leave this puppy in the inclusion crate inside the home when the big dogs are out. And this coexistence is also something that is a slow process for me, for me and I am going to take my time with this. Ah. So she's a little overexcited there, I'm gonna correct that. Um, so this is something that's going to take place over many weeks. And once I get a calm where these dogs start to understand that this puppy is just a staple here now, you're going to coexist with this puppy. She is part of our family. She's part of our life. She's part of your environment. Once they understand that, and that typically can take, you know, two or three weeks before they're really comfortable with that, I'm going to keep her like this for her safety. Um, at that point, I am going to move forward and do one-on-one -on -one introductions with the puppy on a leash, with my big dog on a leash, and we're going to do that with the help of another handler, probably my husband, and we will do on-leash introductions between the two of them. Um, it's not going to just be open the gate, you know, it's been enough time, let them free, let them go, because I know that even with this much exposure, Riot would probably just get on this puppy if this puppy made one wrong step or one wrong move. So, um, you know, again, this is a slow, slow process. I can't stress that enough. Do not try to rush this process, especially if you have a dog like my Riot, who you know has a tendency to get on puppies or small dogs and not really like them. Now, once you have graduated from the small crate to the inclusion crate and achieved the same harmonious calm and the same um, ability to just coexist peacefully with each other in each other's space, then it's time to move on to the actual physical introduction. Now, I can't show this to you yet because I have not achieved that with my second step just yet. She's still a pretty young puppy. And I would say that on average, this doesn't happen for me until my puppy is at least you know, 13, 14 weeks old, roughly, before I actually do a physical introduction. But I do wanna take the time to just explain briefly what that physical introduction will look like. So number one, I'm gonna have both of my dogs on a leash, and that is just a safeguard in case something were to happen, then I can have the other handler pull the big dog away, and I can snatch up the puppy really quickly. If something happens and you need to react, you need to have the insurance your insurance policy basically is your leash. So make sure that you do leash both dogs before the physical contact happens. One thing that I like to do is actually take them one by one for a walk. So I'm actually just going to walk each of my dogs with my puppy, both on a leash, but I want two handlers doing it. That is not going to be me with a puppy on one hand and my big dog on the other hand. Nay, nay, that is a big mistake. You're gonna need two handlers for this. Someone handling the puppy, 
someone handling the big dog and just go for a walk in your neighborhood. It's a nice neutral space to introduce two dogs. Now I'm gonna spend time doing this as well. This is also a process. This is something that I do with my dogs over time. So what ends up happening is this really nice, organic, fluid introduction into the pack where this puppy from the time she was eight weeks old has become a part of their lives every single day. In all sensory aspects, they have experienced this puppy from the time she was eight weeks old to the time of physical introduction at around 14 weeks old or so. I'm just spitballing that as an average for me is about what it takes for me to achieve all that I talked about to get to that um, physical introduction point, about 14 weeks. So you're gonna see that if you really take your time here and do this right, that even if you're working with a dog who struggles with introductions to young dogs or small puppies or small dogs, you'll see that this will likely work for them. Some dogs just need a really slow introduction and time to um, you know, adapt and, and change to this new dog coming into their space. Riot just happens to be that kind of dog. So I have to respect that about him. I am not going to disrespect Riot by throwing a puppy into his face who's just allowed to just accost him and bite him and jump on him and then he gets mad at the puppy but then he gets in trouble because he, like it turns into, you know, some people will tell you, and I think this is not great advice, some people will tell you, just let him meet and if the big dog checks the little dog or the puppy, that's just nature's way. He'll, he'll learn and move on. And I personally think that that's just terrible advice. That does come into play to an extent, but that is sure as hell not how you introduce a dog to a puppy. You just don't do that. Do not just throw the dogs into a room and just be like, well, you know, if the big dog bites the little dog, I guess that'll teach him a lesson and he won't go up to him anymore. I mean, not really, especially when you're dealing with Malinois. They're a different kind of breed. They're a little special. So, um, you know, you might find, which I have found before, that a puppy who gets nailed by a bigger dog doesn't give a shit that that dog is a bigger dog and will go after that bigger dog and it becomes a fight that that little dog is going to lose. That dog will die. That puppy is in danger, mortal danger. So you have to be careful with these types of breeds. It's not that simple. You have to really put some forethought into how you're gonna introduce a new puppy to your pack. All right, guys, so that's gonna do it for today. I hope you found this video helpful, and I hope that you will heed some of my advice when you are thinking about introducing your puppy to your pack. Um, I do want to try to remember to do a follow-up video when I actually do the physical um, introductions because I'm not at that point yet, but I do want to try to remember to, to film that so I can show you guys what that looks like. So um, stay tuned for that. That should be coming up you know, in the weeks to come as the pup continues to grow and we continue to make progress in the uh, introduction process. So anyway, um, I hope you guys have a great weekend. Please make sure that you subscribe, uh, ring the bell for notifications. I upload every Saturday. And I will see you guys same time next week.